it shines The night is still Shepherds watching from a hill I close my eyes to see the night When love was born A perfect child Gently waits A mother bends To kiss God's face I close my eyes To see the night When love was born Angels fill the midnight sky When love was born It's all yours, brother. Good evening. One of these days I'll sing that pretty. <laughs> so put your book, Bibles to the book of uh, John chapter 1 real quickly tonight. I'm not going to tell you who it was, but somebody said on the way in tonight that they wouldn't be mad if I just said the prayer and moved on to dinner. So. <laughs> Isn't that what you said, Wayne? Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't supposed to say that. We're, we're going to do something a little different tonight about thinking about Christmas. We, we looked at John 3 this morning, God's love. But have you ever thought about how our world would look if Jesus hadn't been born? I want you to think about that for just a minute. What would, we, what would be different this evening if Jesus had not come 2,000 years ago? If he had not been born in Bethlehem, what would be different tonight? Somebody tell me. Something would be different. No hope. no hope. Well, obviously we wouldn't have any hope because without him there's no redemption. Without redemption there's no hope. So that would be certainly an obvious thing. What else it would be true? What's that? Why? What, what would make it worse? <laughs> no new hope is right. Uh, because if we didn't have any hope, we wouldn't have this church. Because you see, if Jesus didn't come, then we have no church. Because the church came and, and was established because of Christ. And the pro Yeah, Brother Steve, I see your hand. Well, 
That, that is possible true. That's what happened in the Old Testament, isn't it? Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. So uh, things would be different that way. What else would be different tonight? What else would be true if, or not true <clears throat> if Jesus hadn't come? Okay. All right. I want to stop there right there just a minute. Did you realize that if Jesus hadn't been born, we wouldn't have a Bible? Because the New Testament, the first four books of the New Testament, the Gospels, are all about who? Jesus Christ. They're all about His coming. They're all about His life. They're all about His death. And they're all about His resurrection. And then <clears throat> on the heels of... <coughs> Excuse me, maybe we better pray and go eat. I don't know. Um, on the heels of those four Gospels, we have the church and we have the epistles. And who are, what are they about? They're about everything Jesus taught us and how to live and how to minister. So we could take the New Testament and literally throw it away. So if we think and throw the New Testament away, what are we going to do with the Old Testament? Throw it away too. Because it prophesied that he would come. So if he didn't come, we could just get rid of the whole Bible. We wouldn't even have a Bible to preach from. So that's a good point. What else we got? What else might have happened? Yeah. Lexi? How old are you again? That girl's smart, I'm telling you what. And she's deep. She's deep. Uh, that's true. You know, what is it that keeps us going? Hope, right? Hope. Jesus, we have no hope of eternity. We got no Jesus, we got no hope of eternity. What else is true? These are all good things. Dr. Wagner. Is the world going to deteriorate in the last 2,000 years the way it did in the last 20 years? Or is the world going to be there? So it's going to be even deeper. Exactly right. Morally. Now we have problems, and, and he just pointed out, we have a lot of problems in our world. Our, our world has degenerated morally. But just think about this. If we hadn't had the gospel, what has the gospel done? The gospel has not only given us hope for the future, the gospel has changed our life now. It's enabled us to live differently. It's enabled us to do our marriages differently, handle our money differently. It's enabled us to deal with other people differently. If Jesus had never come, that would have all been changed. Our world wouldn't be a very nice place. Yes, again, Lexi, you've got another one. Go ahead. Yep. Amen. Wow. How old again are you? Uh, <laughs> what college did you go to? You you raising your hand? Yeah. Sure. We'd never know that kind of love, would we? We'd have never known John three sixteen. The best love we would ever had was human love. Uh, the Bible calls it phileo love, the name of city of uh, Philadelphia, city of brotherly love. But we never know that sacrificial. Yeah, Mariah, what you got? We could have no faith. We'd have nothing to have faith in. Because if Jesus didn't show up, then what would have happened? Everything God had promised us and told us about, we couldn't trust because it didn't happen. <laughs> Did you coach him tonight? No, I'm just kidding. No, they are good news clubs, and we're and I'm proud of them too. I am. And it won't be too long, I think. I think they're vying for my job, man. I just <laughs> would you hope like to have a new uh, a, a pastor, a lady pastor? Don't answer that. All right, but these are true things. I mean, th this, these young people are thinking, this is great. What else is true? What else is true if Jesus hadn't come? We got no church. What's the date today? What's the day's date? 
December 17th, you know that the calendar, calendar wouldn't be the same if Jesus hadn't come? Because our calendar is based on the birth of Christ. So our calendar would be different today, it would be whatever day, and it certainly wouldn't be necessarily a Sunday. And if it was a Sunday, it wouldn't matter. All because Jesus didn't come. What else is true? Come on, you guys are doing a good job. It, it, the faster you are, the faster you eat. So go ahead now. All right? Our foundation of everything would be different. Sure. You know, the foundation of marriage, the foundation of the job, the foundation of the family, the foundation of the world, and that, and that is a very excellent point. Think about this. Hospitals. Do you know where the advancements in medical care have come from? Christians. Education. You know who some of the greatest educators of all time were? Christians. Compassion. Human rights. Human value of life. You know who the greatest advocates against abortion are? Christians because they have a value to, to life, to human life. Where did they get that value from? They came it from Jesus Christ because he died to save people, not to kill them. All of those things would be different. Our whole world, we look, think about now the advancements in technology and, and all the cool things that happen and sometimes not so cool things that, that we enjoy. And where did, that, where did that come from? It came, folks, whether directly or indirectly, it came as a result of the fact that Jesus Christ changed this world and he changes it every day. He changes lives, he changes homes, he changes marriages, he changes people and he changes them for the good. But if Jesus never came, we, we think now, we say, wow, you know, our world is really bad. Folks, it's not anything compared to what it would be like if Jesus never came. In John chapter 1, I want to show you something. Just a couple of things here. In verse 14, it says, In the Word, the Word, capital W, means Christ. The Word was made flesh, and He dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he that was before me. And of his fullness have all we received in grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Here's the verse I want you to see. No man had seen God at any time the only begotten Son, which is the bosom of the Father, he hath, what? Declared him. I heard a little story about a Sunday school teacher and she was trying to give the kids busy work and she gave them a piece of paper and some crayons and this little boy was drawing the picture and she said, son, what are you doing? He said, I'm drawing a picture of God. And she smiled and she said, son, nobody knows what God looks like. He said, they will when I'm done. But we do know what God looks like, don't we? He looks like Jesus. All those years in the Old Testament, God would give a revelation, but he gave this limited time and limited information, and he would only speak to the prophets, and he didn't give direct revelation to the people, and the prophets would write it down. But God was up here, and the people were down here, and they were afraid, like at Mount Sinai, they were afraid to draw near. Oh, but folks, when God, Jesus came, he invited us in, didn't he? When he died on the cross, he tore that, that uh, veil of the temple, and he says, listen, you don't have to be afraid anymore. You don't have to stay out there and worry anymore. The way is made plain and open and free. I want you to come. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. But there wouldn't be any rest if Jesus hadn't come. 
At the very best, we'd be back under the Old Testament law. We'd still be trying to please God, trying to raise our sheep and, and goats and, and calves so that every now and then we would come to some priest and, and, and have him offer those things to appease our sin for another year. Oh, but because Jesus came, we have a priest. We have a high priest. And we have a priest that is touched by the feelings of our infirmity. He is the intercessor on our behalf. He goes before us and you say, oh, but God, God, he said, look, I've got you. I'm, I'm covering. I'm your advocate. Jesus, or John says, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he has paid the price for our sins. His blood was sp spilt and poured out on the mercy seat of heaven and we are covered by that blood. Isn't that a fantastic truth? But none of that would have happened if Jesus hadn't have come. Let me show you one more thing. And then I'll have blessing and we can eat. Look over in John chapter 8. John 8 and 28. Then said Jesus unto them, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I always, or do always those things that please him. Do you ever wonder how to please God? Do you ever wonder if what you're doing pleases God? I mean, it, the way I do my work, does that please God? The, the way I handle, raise my children, is that pleasing to God? The way I attend church, the way I give my money, is that pleasing to God? Listen, if we didn't have Jesus Christ, we wouldn't know how to live a life that pleases God. Because he set forth the example. He told us how to handle our enemies. The world says, you know, give them back what they gave you and double it up. Jesus said, do not return evil for evil, but overcome evil with good. He teaches us how to live in a way in this world, in this evil world. He teaches us in a way how to live in such a way that our life pleases God. And he not only tells us how to do it, but he also gives us the grace and the power to do it. He doesn't leave us on our own to try to figure it out. Romans chapter 6, Apostle Paul wrote, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How that we who are dead to sin should live any longer in that way. You see, Jesus Christ not only saved us from the penalty of sin, he broke the power of sin. And he gives us the enablement, the guidance, the direction to live in a way that pleases him and pleases our heavenly father and makes our life better. These are just a few things. I, uh, I didn't even know that there was a, such a book, but uh, Dr. D. James Kennedy, who was the pastor of a Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church down in Fort Lauderdale for many, many years, and the uh, director and the establisher of Evangelism Explosion, he's got a book out called What If Jesus Had Never Been Born? And I was just looking at a few things today that he had. But listen tonight, folks. I have good news. Jesus was born. And he did live. And he did always please his Father. And he went to that cross. And he died there. And he was buried. And he rose again the third day. And he's coming back for us. Aren't you glad? Because we don't just celebrate a baby's birth on, on Christmas. That's just the beginning. We celebrate his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, and his return. 
That's our hope tonight. And I hope it's your hope. Let's bow our heads together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this church and I thank you for these folks that sat before me tonight. The great crowd that we had this morning and the sweet spirit here in this place. I, I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for what we can see and I also thank you for what we don't see. I thank you for how you work. I thank you for people that reach out, that understand the spirit of Christ and the spirit of Christmas and they reach out to their fellow brothers and sisters and they reach out to folks that are hurting and they reach out to people who don't have and they show Jesus to them. We'd have missed all of that if you hadn't come. But I'm so glad that you did. I'm so glad tonight that you give us the opportunity to walk in your steps and to show Jesus to this world at a time when they so easily forget that where Christmas becomes about a tree and a decoration and, and packages and a guy in a red suit. But Christmas is about Jesus Christ. Thank you for coming. Thank you for visiting us, showing us what God is like, how to live in a way that pleases him, to make our Bible, the, the, the scriptures that we testify to and, and trust in, to make them valuable to us and true. I just pray tonight that as we dismiss this service and go into the fellowship hall for a time of fellowship around the table, I pray that you'll bless our food and thank you, God, for each one that's helped to cook it, prepare it. And God, may we enjoy the food, but may we enjoy each other as much. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go eat.